Hey guys, Anthony 4 before Diesel. This video is going to be um, a maximum EGR cleaning info video. Um, anything that's going to be, I'm going to try and keep it short and to the point. Um, we're going to include the gaskets you need, the part numbers, how important it is, what you should do and what you shouldn't and why and all that sort of thing. We've done a lot of other videos, as I said before, check out all the older videos, search EGR, EGR cleaning. You know we've got that, there's a full length EGR cleaning video, the physical side of R&R, &R, cleaning that EGR, I think it goes for an hour and a half or something like that, so search that one up if you haven't found it yet. Um, what I'd like to go through first is some part numbers. Um, actually, first thing I'll say is, so there's a lot of people, this is 1KD specific, okay? Now on the 1KDs, there's different, I know there's a lot of guys, I know we've got our American friends watching also, and your 1KDs may have different intake and EGR systems, so some of these gasket numbers might be different, but this is for the vehicles in Australia, okay? <coughs> 1KD FTV in Australia, um, a lot of people are going to have to replace their injectors eventually, wear and tear items, right? So it's not a problem, it's not a failure, it's not a common problem. It is about as common as your tyres wearing out, okay? So the injectors do wear. Um, look, you could probably never change them and the thing might go for a very long time. There's a lot of variables there, but we're talking about running it clean, efficient, reliable. This isn't about injectors, but part of replacing the injectors, if people haven't done the maintenance, and when I say maintenance, not just the normal servicing and stuff that's in the book, because of this EGR system, there's other maintenance required that isn't covered in servicing. Because if you haven't seen already, your whole intake system cakes up with soot, okay? Your exhaust gas recirculation, EGR, right? It's putting diesel exhaust gases back into your engine, which as you can see from the soot that comes out the tailpipe, wouldn't be a good idea to do that. But that's what they do. We can't change that. It's a bad idea. Um, however, this is what the ways they've chosen to reduce emissions, okay, if it works. We're not going to talk about if it works and how it works in this one. That's in other videos, right? So, for a lot of people, if you've got a lower K, 1KD, and it's not quite ready for injector replacement yet, it's probably really wise to at least give your intake a clean, and a lot of people are also using that EGR flow reduction plate. The reason we like that is it's cheap, it's reliable, it reduces the flow. The EGR system, we believe it still works. At idle, it's 20% instead of 50% exhaust gases, and the EGR valve stays clean. So it works. I'm not going to say whether it's legal or not. That's your job to figure out. You need to talk to a lawyer if you're worried about that. <coughs> I'll just tell you what works, okay? So... If you're going to do an EGR clean, to prepare yourself, some of the things you need are the gaskets. Now, let's go all the way. Now, you know, we've got these, some of these, we've got a whole lot of stuff in our injector kit. This is an add-on option in our injector kit. Um, but if you are nowhere near replacing the injectors, we don't, I'm not a massive parts selling business as far as, you know, bits and pieces go. So these sorts of things, it's up to you whether you want to go to your local Toyota dealer or whether you want to... Um, um, order them from somewhere else that's cheaper, whatever you want. I'm just going to give you the part numbers for, to make it easier for people that want to go ahead and do that and replace these gaskets. One thing I'll say quickly is a lot of these gaskets you can reuse. So I'll give you the part numbers and then I'll tell you the likelihood of needing to replace them and for the people that want to save money, the ones you can reuse and why. Okay, so we'll go deep first. We'll go all the way in deep as possible. On all the 1KDs I work on, whether it's a Hilux or Prado from 05 through to 2015 in Australia, the intake manifold gasket currently comes in a brown bag. They used to come in red and white Toyota. There's a lot of different packaging, okay? Stock comes in different, you know, red, white, black, you know, black, brown, black, you know, all sorts of things changing. So part number of the intake manifold is 17177300010. And if you're doing that, there's also a single use fuel return line gasket or washer or double-sided washer if you like that's one of these okay that you need to go to the fuel line on the outside of the head single use only it's really difficult to get in there and torque that one up with a torque wrench i think from memory it's meant to be 13 newton meters i don't remember because i don't use it i do it by hand it's way too hard to get in there with the engine in the vehicle um, so a new gasket and just nip it nicely i can do that because Look, we've done a lot of these, so I've got a bit of a feel for it. I'm not sure what you should do. If you should go to the travel to get a torque wrench onto it, that's for you to work out, okay? But they're the parts you need. I suggest you replace it. Intake. Okay, now coming up towards the EGR, the one that we that goes between the manifold and the elbow, 
this is probably one of the most important ones doing an EJR clean, and that's this one here, okay? So 26171-30050. Just a reminder, if you're overseas, if you're in Norway or something, you'll probably have a different, because um, I've noticed you're number two on the uh, international list of people watching, you've probably got, I know for sure, that there's at least one of your engines that's got a different intake system and different gaskets. So a lot of these gaskets might not be for you. You're best getting your VIN number, go to your local Toyota dealer. These sorts of things shouldn't be too expensive. I say shouldn't be, but you never know. Now moving up to the next one, you've got a gasket each side of the EJR valve. That's this one and it's different again to the last one. The number for that, 26171-300-30 for that one. You'll need two of those, okay? So it's all one so far, one, one, one. You need two of those. And then you've got the one at the throttle body, which is the, the square one. Now when I say need, not necessarily we'll get to that. 26171-300-20, right? So it's pretty easy, fly those three O's and two O's. Okay, and then you've got your EJR cooler. Okay, so there's one that goes at the bottom of the EJR valve, clips on the bottom of the EJR valve, that's this one. Okay, I'll just give those a little bit of a tweak, bend in like that, and it clips on, stays on a bit better. That's 25627-30010. Okay, that's the gasket there, bottom of the EJR valve. And then, so that's the back of the EJR cooler if you like. Now the front of the EJR cooler, where it goes between the head. Now there's a few different gaskets for this. I've seen three different types of gaskets. I don't really care. One's for one, one's for the other. It doesn't really matter. They all work the same. This is the one I like. Out of the three of them, this is the one that I like. It matches this one. It matches all the other gaskets. Out of the three of them, it just looks like the right one. So I use that on all the vehicles if I'm going to replace it. 25628-30010, similar to this one. Yeah, 627, 628, there you go, see? That's all your intake gaskets, okay? Now, the other important part is, for people that want to stop the problem from happening again, is one of these plates from Kaon. That's who Kaon is, there it is, Kaon, right? So you can probably buy these, I'm not sure, but you can probably buy them. Check out their website anyway, kaon.com.au, all right? Um, seven mil EJ blanking plate, that's what they look like. That's the plate that we use and recommend quality it's a good company mate good people so that's mainly why there but a lot of people still text me and ask me about the plate what plate where why so that's what this that's what sort of you know got the idea for this video going but instead of just talking about the plate i'm giving you all this other info as well because that's how we roll so if you go on ebay right there they are k on about the seller you know seven thousand six hundred sales not you're only going to get 99.9 because .9 some people just whinge so you know this is the plate i'll go to the top there yeah, it is in my saved items, right? So search that, that's the plate you want. So basically what I'm saying is, if you, you know, you've done 20 or 70 or 50 or 90 or 100,000 Ks and you're not due for injectors yet, but you've realized you don't know, oh, your intake's probably caked and you want to get maximum, is the engine running well with the intake cake? You know, is it efficient? Is it, you know, you've got to think about, do think about the environment and what's best because Having a system like that and a system that's, you know, damaging your engine isn't good for the longevity of the life of the engine, is it? So, something to think about. I'll just give you the information. You've seen all the photos before. If you haven't, check out our other videos. There's plenty of photos and videos with caked up EGR. Some of the other things you need. So, if you, I recommend this is what you do, right? If you've got a 120 or something with a, a Hilux with the intercooler up top, you've got to get the intercooler off. You start taking off those few components. You watch our other video. Watch it two or three times so that you're really familiar with the job. If you're not meant to be touching tools, if you're not that person, please don't do this. Just leave it alone. Take it to someone and pay them to do the work. Someone, But make sure you find the right person. That's the other thing. Um, in our VIP group, which you can only join once you've purchased something like the injector kit, um, whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? So... Some other things you need once you get the components off. Uh, look, to, to clean the thickest part of it, generally scraping it with a screwdriver and rags and stuff is you go. Once you get most of it off, a brush like this is really awesome. Now, here in Australia, we buy this from Bunnings. Now, you can't get these exact ones anymore. These were $2, right? It's a Decor brush. I'm not plugging Decor because, yeah, that's another story. But anyway, this happens to be exactly the right size that jams in there. And it works really well. So what you do is you use your cans of degreaser like this, right? This is from Repco, not plug and Repco. Or super cheap, you know, that's where you get them. Doesn't matter, same stuff, different can. Get it when it's on special, when they've got 10 can, you know, 10 cans for 10 or 12 bucks or whatever it is. When they're a dollar, dollar fifty a can, stock up a bit because it comes in handy. 
you spray it on the brush, you spray a bit in there and you get in there and that dissolves all the, that's degreaser is in, you know, kind of like oil based, caro based, that's what it probably is, right? That's what degre that's your degreasing type thing, right? And then once you're done with that, you know, you wash it all out, but you'll see a staining on the aluminium, right? Or aluminum, whatever you want to call it, right? It's all good. Um, you'll see a staining on there that doesn't come off really well with that. That's where a kind of um, a more alkaline sort of type degreaser, water based if you like, you know? And it's um, you've got to dilute it before you use it on aluminum or alloy. Um, and they recommend one part degrees or two parts water. It all depends whether you put it on something that's dry or whether you wet it first, how long you're leaving it on there. It says when cleaning motor bodies, paint and service, use one part degrees or 20 parts water. So you need to read the directions and all that sort of thing. It says to spray and brush on, allow five to 10 minutes for penetration. I don't say that. If you do that, that's where it eats into things. So I like to put it on, I'll use it undiluted on these alloy parts, but they'll be wet and I'll be scrubbing and it'll be rinsed off within about 30 seconds to a minute and then I'll put more on, you know what I mean? I've got a little tin, you know, it's a baked beans tin actually and that sits in there perfectly and soaks in and I pull it out, shh, give it a scrub and I've got the pressure washer there to uh, rinse it out. But as you know, I don't do EJR cleaning anymore. Done too many of them, I'm over it. I don't do EJR cleaning. That's another reason why I showed you the video how to clean your own EJR so then you can bring it to get your injectors done. The degreaser we use after is this one right again not plugging kenko or bunnings but that's what it is and where we buy it and the prices i've said it in other videos i've mentioned these products the price has gone up a lot over the years but it's still doable as far as i'm concerned i think it's 17.50 now for five liters they've got it at super cheap as well i think it's well into the 20 dollars for six liters you know unique for super cheap it's a bit bigger but it's a bit dearer as well Anyway guys, uh, what else can I tell you? I've told you about cone on the plate. What can I tell you about the plate? The plate stops the soot. We'll just briefly touch on catch cans. Catch cans reduce the oil, maybe. Some work, some don't. Some block up and cause problems, pop seals. Some restrict the flow of the PCV and then people ending up with dirty engines. So there can be some associated problems with catch cans. They're expensive, they're untidy. The brackets can be poorly made. They wobble around, can damage the vehicle. You don't need one of those in my opinion. It's up to you if you want one, you've got one or you want to keep one. Keep watching videos and doing your research. Um, the plate reduces the flow of the soot. Um, it may be illegal, you have to read the fine print in your state. Certainly shutting off the EJR valves is illegal. I know a lot of people don't care. I'm not here to tell you whether I care or not, it doesn't matter. I'm just telling you is you need to work that out for yourself. I'm telling you what works. This plate with a seven mil hole works, fits in really well. Reduces the flow beautifully. The EJR system still works and operates. At idle, the, your engine's running on 50-50. 50% cold filtered air from your intercooler and your airbox. 50% exhaust gas is terrible. With that plate in, it adjusts to about 70, uh, sorry, 80-20, 20-80, whatever you want to call it. 20% exhaust gases, which sounds pretty bad still, but as you drive and accelerate, that ratio changes to the benefit of cleaner air right but there's still enough there when you come back to idle and back off that it flows a little bit and it allows that turbo pressure to whistle backwards through the hole as well and let that out a bit quicker so that's the plate that's where to get it you can get it on the Cohen website or ebay probably there's all your um, intake cleaning gaskets i'm not sure what else i can tell you about that we don't sell this separately because at the end of the day look it's probably worth all this gear here is probably worth over $50, but the way we do it with our injector kit is we don't muck around with dollars and cents. The injector kit's price X, then you've got your add-on kits. This add-on kit's 50 bucks, right? So to add on this, it's 50 bucks, right? That's how it is. That's the only way we sell it as an add-on like that. As I said, we don't clean any just, so get in there, clean it, even if you're not, I don't care if you put the plate in. I'm just answering questions for people that ask. Yes, there's thousands of people with it. It works, the EJ valve stays clean. You don't need a catch can. If you like it and you want to put it in, you know where to get it, you know where the gaskets are. You've got a video showing you how to clean it. I'm sure you know how to get the brush and I don't need to physically get messy in a video, do I? Um, I hope that's helped. Whole heap of information there. Cha-ching, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Catch you later, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and share it with your friends because we're here to help and Stay tuned. Make sure you got the bell on for the next video because you want to keep up with it all. You know, watch it each day, each night as it comes in. We're going to try not to bombard you too many in a day. And obviously from time to time, we need to take some time off holidays and stuff like that. So when that happens and it goes a bit quiet, that's when you go back through the channel and do some catch up, do your homework. 
All right, guys, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. See ya.